Good afternoon. <coughs> Hi, Erwin. Hi, Andy. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Siri. Hi, almost. If you guys can hear me okay, um, see my screen all right, put it into the chat, let me know. Say hi. Good afternoon. How are you all doing today? Hey, Mary, how are you doing? See your hand up. I guess you can all hear me okay. Fantastic. Hey, and I, what I like to do when I'm um, in a webinar is that, you know, put it into the chat. Let me know where you're joining me from. Mary's got it already from Taiwan. Fantastic. Everyone else, put it into the chat. Let me know where are you joining me from. I would love to find out. Tend to get uh, participants from all around the world, attendees from all around the world. So I'm trying to see if I've covered the whole globe right now. Good stuff. We'll give it a couple of minutes before we get started. Hope you've all been trading well. Canary Islands, that's the first. Sabine, you're the first one. First time I've get uh, I've got an attendee from the Canary Islands. Fantastic. <laughs> Today we are here with Tick Mill on the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. It is a trading strategy clinic, right? It's a trading strategy clinic. So Clinic is on. If you have any questions, if you've been trading, if you have any questions of your trades, please feel free to put it into the chat and let me know. You know, if you have a strategy that you've been deploying, you know, you want to find out, you know, how you can tweak it or if it's been working well for you, let me know. If it has been working a bit on and off, let me know as well. I'll be happy to share with you my views. Maybe, hopefully, tweak it a little bit better to help you with your trading journey. <clears throat> hey, Rick, how are you doing? Hey, Samuel. Keep it coming, guys. Everyone, where are you joining us from? We'll give it um, 30 seconds before we get started. <clears throat> and I hope you've been trading well, as well and profitably. Anyone traded the non-farm payrolls on Friday? <laughs> Just as I was asking. <clears throat> Fantastic. NASDAQ trading the retracement to the market close. Yeah, it did shoot up and then after that retrace back down again. Um, dollar index as well. Pretty much across the board, you know, we saw the dollar strength and then the big retracement. Hey Sumit, how are you doing? Alrighty, let's get started. Again, thank you all for attending the session. Those of you who came in nice and early and on time, fantastic, welcome again. Um, so we are here with Take Mill on the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. If you are new to the session, please feel free to put your questions into the chat box there. Um, I'll be looking at the questions and happy to help you with any questions that you have, any trading related questions that you have, all right? With that, just a quick introduction. Today, we are here doing the Trading Strategy Clinic. So what's the Trading Strategy Clinic? Basically, I'm looking for your input. If you have any um, thoughts or any strategy that you are testing or have deployed and you have questions about it, feel free to let me know. Um, I've been trading for quite a while now. So I always say 10 years, but it's 10, almost 15 years now. So I'll be happy to share with you my overall um, analysis as well. Okay. So my name is Jin Dao. Most of you will know me as Jin. Um, so good to meet you all. With that, um, what I'll do is I'll show you some other 
um, a platform that you should jump onto. And then I'll show you as you are typing up your questions, I'll show you the way I approach the markets, share with you my trading strategy, how I look into um, the news and then into the charts. We'll possibly identify some trading ideas or possible trading setups. Okay. <coughs> Um, before all that, a quick disclaimer is that the material provided is for information purpose only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information or opinions expressed in the text or in the webinar belong solely to the author and not to the author's employer, organization, committee or other group or individual or company. All right. So. Um, make sure that if you do jump into any trades, if you do look into any possible trade setups and you do jump into any trades, please, please, please do your own due diligence. Make sure you check your um, leverage, right? You're not over trading. Make sure you check your margin. And also, you know, make sure that you check that if you jump into any trade, it actually fits with your own trading strategy as well. Okay. You have to be comfortable with the way you enter the trade before um, you actually do deploy any of the trade entries. All right. So with that, take that away. Just wanted to share with you all something here. Okay. So you can see, I'll put a link, this link into the chat. Okay. The Tick Mill Traders Club. Okay. Tick Mill Traders Club. The link is there into the chat already. I mean, it's an access to exclusive member market insights that cater to your technical and fundamental analysis needs. A lot of times, what traders will tend to feel is that when you're trading, you feel like, hey, you're approaching the markets alone. Trading can be boring or lonely if you're doing this alone. What you need is a bit of a community to approach the markets together, ask questions, get help, seek opinions. Okay, so you want to jump onto the Traders Club, where all you have to do is, you know, you jump into that, you register for it. The link is there. It's an all-in-one trading hub at your fingertips. You get Chief Trader Insights, Technical Analysis, Interactive Community. Um, the features are all there, but what I'll do is I'll show you the Traders Club itself, okay? So I'll send this across as well. You can click on that link and get in after you've registered for it. But what you can do here, all right, so the welcome page, it tells you how to get registered, how to get a <laughs> access to the club, okay? So it's all there. What we do here on a daily basis is provide you analysis. Okay, we provide you analysis. The markets can get quite confusing um, if you have not been following with the news. So all the news are there, what to expect. And you can see I'm the one posting there as well. Uh, what to expect on gold, you know, on oil, what has been happening on the US dollar front, where do we expect it to go, where do we think it could be heading towards, right? So you got all the analysis there, right, on the news front, the Euro news, what's, up, what's coming up, where could it head towards? Not just, it's not just something that you go on and read and you know, that would be enough. It's not just that. What you actually can do as well is jump into the charts, right? So I have the Euro dollar chart opened here. Uh, we have analysis provided. You know, this is a Euro dollar potential bullish continuation. You can see that the analysis was posted there. Let me find one that I posted recently. <clears throat> nope, not that one. Um, US yen. Okay, you can see that I've posted some analysis as a key support level. If it breaks, it could drop down towards 113.58, those kind of stuff. Okay, so you can actually go into this and say something like, um, <coughs> you know, could, could the US EJPY trade higher towards this level? You know, and then you can actually draw in a line and identify the level. Okay, so you can actually link objects to that point. And once you pose that, we can actually 
when I jump onto the platform and or any of the analysts jumps onto the platform, we can actually see what you're referring to, talking about the US yen jumping to that resistance or trading higher towards that resistance level at 139.53. Okay, so this is a very helpful tool for your trading journey where you know you could be trading, you have questions, right? You want to, for example, in this case, you were thinking that you want to buy the US yen up. <coughs> towards that 140 resistance level. You put in that question there, you know, we can't enter a trade for you, but we can give you our thoughts, our views. We would say something like, hey, it could get there, needs to break above this 136.19 level first, right? So we can provide that insights to help you with your training journey. And also you can see that there are a lot of um, discussions about potential support and resistance levels and Fibonacci levels that you want to pay attention to, okay? So it is promising and interactive, um, this community. So Tuksha, make sure you jump on. The link is there. Right? You can find out more about the Traders Club, the Tick Mill Traders Club here. The link is there. And then make sure you follow the process on how to get registered into the club, okay? It's all there. Open and fund your Tickmail account. Sign up with the Traders Club with the link there. I'll click on that and see if it brings us and then email to get access. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll send you that link again. <laughs> so main thing is, I like this line. You don't need to trade solo. You, know, you have a whole community. Let's work together. Let's trade. Let's make money together. All right. So with that said, um, if you have any questions, I hope all of you, all of you jump onto the link, sign up for it. And once you get on, drop a message, right? Put it into the um, welcome area or put it into the analysis where we post up analysis. Say hi, give us your thoughts, ask a question. We'll be there to support you with your trades. All right. <coughs> With that, let's get into the charts, look into the news. I'll tell you how I approach the markets. You can see that you know I provide a lot of the fundamental analysis. I provide a lot of the news analysis here. Uh, so how I look into the charts and look into my own trading is, first off, I look at the fundamentals. I look at the news. I look at the economics to get me an overall direction of directional bias of where prices should be heading, right? So I look into the fundamentals first, get a view of the economics, the data being released. You can see here, I use Forex Factory. I use Forex Factory to tell me about news and data to be released. And then with that, I jump onto the charts and make sure that it's aligned. So say for example, Noble just asked about the pound dollar. Let's see how pound dollar is doing this week. You know, my views about a pound dollar, you can see final services PMI was 48, expected 48.8, came out 48.8 as expected. We could be seeing, we should be seeing some upside on a pound dollar. Then I'll jump into the charts, All right? I'll jump into the charts here on the um, pound dollar. Okay, I'll show it to you on the H4 time frame first. <clears throat> you can see it pushing towards upside. Just bring up my charts. Right, you can see it. Um, no, that's not the pound dollar. That's the pound dollar. Okay, you can see the pound dollar right now trading a little bit lower. So I'm saying, okay, I'll be looking for the pound dollar to come down, possibly test a key level at about that 1.1280, it's about 1.2273 right now. It might come all the way down, but it might just trade at this level. So I'm looking for it to, if it breaks down from this point, I could anticipate that a pound dollar is going to trade within this range before possibly breaking higher again. Okay, so how would I be looking at this? I looked at the fundamentals first. Overall direction, I'm thinking that we should see dot the pound dollar push towards upside. So because of that, 
if it's trading down, I'm not looking to sell it down. I'll be looking for it to break above, you know, come down, test within this range. If it breaks back up, then I'll be looking to buy at this point. Okay, I'll take that away. That looks terrible. Right, I'll be looking for a possible entry above that point. You can see something like that. You know, stop loss, relatively tight within that range, 70, 80 pips, right? Take profit towards the next swing high. We look into the charts to find the next swing high. Okay, so this is a brief overview of how I approach the markets, how I look at the my analysis. I do a fundamentals first, get the overall direction, look at to see where prices could be heading, then look into the charts, make sure it aligns. If I think that price should be heading up, but price is actually pointing towards the downside, I'll sit out, I'll wait for price to come down, bounce off a level, then I'll look to buy it up. Okay? So quite straightforward, um, quite systematic. If you have any questions, please let me know. <coughs> would you short the pound dollar since the view is consolidating? I wouldn't short the pound dollar, right? So because of that, remember I was anticipating that the pound dollar should be heading towards upside I'll show it to you on the H1 time frame. Okay, you can see that. <clears throat> um, where was it? Okay, since Friday, it broke up, test that one point. I'll draw a better line here. 1.23 1 1 level, right? So it tests at 1.23 here. And this point here. And then it tested a few more times again and again at those levels. Once it broke above that point, it shot up. So I wouldn't be looking to sell the pound dollar down. I do know that um, there is an opportunity to sell it down, right? Um, let me just show you here. If you do sell it down, yes, you could be looking at a 40, 50 pip stop loss for a 80 pip take profit towards that Friday low that we saw okay there is an opportunity there but for me i look at more i'm more of a trend trader i don't look at a counter trend so i do look for um, trend following trades that's why i would actually prefer to wait for price to come down test you know first opportunity might be to buy if it all aligns right to buy up from this support respecting what happened on Friday. Um, could even do it a bit lower. Stop loss about 40 pips. Take profit about 80 to 90 pips towards the upside as it comes down to bounce off that 1.2180 level. Then if it continues towards the upside, if it breaks above that 1.23 level, then again, I could be looking for, right? If this goes up, and breaks above that resistance, then again, I would be looking for another buying opportunity, this time above that recent high point. Uh, I saw your question there, I'll get to it. Okay, above that recent high point, um, and then to the next key resistance level, which I'll show you again. All right. Uh, Mahmoud, I'll get to Euro dollar shortly. Give me a second there. Jie uh, your horizontal support resistance lines are drawn across the body of the wicks of the or the wicks of the candles. All right, so let me just clear out the lines just to show you um, what I tend to do when I look at support and resistance levels. I don't actually look at one line, right? So as much as I have, you know, identified that one point two three level as a bit of a well, as a firstly a round number resistance level one point two three good strong round number level and then secondly i'm actually considering this so as much as i had a bit of the tail i'm considering the body there i'm considering this tail at the top right i consider the whole area as a resistance area okay so that if that said what it actually looks like or what it should look like is a bit like that oops a bit like that as a resistance. If I take that away now and take that away. So 
when it comes to the trades, <clears throat> when it comes to price breaking above a resistance level, right? What I'm actually looking for is for it to clear out of that area. So I wouldn't be looking to buy at this line. I'll be looking as it breaks out of the area before looking to buy. So basically you carve only zones as compared to solo lines. Yeah, um, I do put in the lines because I kind of factor in the zone already. Uh, why I do a zone instead of a line is just to prevent or just to reduce that the idea of one price. Right? If you start thinking of just one price level, you know, once it comes towards that price level, once it looks to break above that price level, you jump in. What could happen is you get faked out. You get it a bit too early. It retraces back down again. So I consider a whole area. Um, let me find you another example. right? So, And I normally draw my lines on the H4. So these are H1 just to give you a bit more examples. Again here. right? So I'll consider this point over here and over here as a bit of a support level. And then also I'll consider this point here as a support level. I could go all the way down to the tail as a support level. All right. So what happens is that I'm actually considering this whole plot as a support level. And I like it because it's at the 1.19 round number support level as well. So I have a few things putting it together to identify that support, then what happens is I actually draw a line right across. Let's see if I can find something. Can see a line right across as a good support level. I'll take that one away and that one away. Oops. Um, let me try and take that line away. All right, there we go. All right, so that's how I would consider uh, my whole support area, if I drag it right across, you can see how it actually has been working quite well back since November all the way through to end November. It's formed quite a good support. All right. Hope I answered your question there, uh, Zizia and Tuksha. It does help with a little bit of preventing that fake break. Okay, so again, hi, Del, how are you doing? Again, at this point, I would say support level there, a bit of a support level, a bit of a resistance level there. This is on the uh, one hour time frame. This is on one hour time frame chart. Again, that whole range as a bit of a support resistance turn support level. And then the price right in the middle of that, just so that it cleans it out. It makes it a lot easier to struggle with this but there we go all right so we have it there just like that and that's how i would consider my support level so if price comes down right um, down towards this level i don't need it to go all the way to that line right if i were selling at this point what i'll be looking for is right above of us 40 50 pip stop loss take profit will be at will be just before so my stop loss is always beyond that resistance level right it's always beyond that resistance level uh, so in this case 40 pips take profit will be before my support level right support area so in this case it'll be 88 pips so you're looking at a one to two risk reward ratio towards the downside could if you're a counter trend trader could work out but you know another thing that I look at is also identifying that we do have a bit of a channel towards upside, even if that broke out, even if we ignore that. You can see that uh, we do have a bit of a bullish channel. So I'm looking for it to turn down, you know, even if it does do that, turn a bit lower before pushing back up again to go higher. All right. <clears throat> I'm great, Dale. Thanks for asking. Um, zones play out really nicely, even at psychological levels. Thanks for like No worries. You're most welcome. If you do have any other, anyone has any other questions, please, please, please let me know. I'm here. Okay. Um, so before that, we look at the dollar index. 
Okay, I'll take all of that out. <clears throat> I'll take out the Bollinger Band as well. Dollar index back to the H4 time frame. Right on Friday, what we actually saw, just to update you guys, back to the news here. On Friday night, 9.30 p.m. GMT plus 8, I'm in Singapore here, um, we did have the U.S. releasing their non-farm employment change data. Very good data here. Um, it was <clears throat> a 261. It got revised up to 284. Got revised up to 284. They expected a small drop, right? They expected a small drop to 200. It got released at 263, right? So it's again, a very good number, better than expected. Average hourly earnings, again, was 0 0.4. Got revised up to 0 0.5. Expected a small drop, but again, got pushed up to 0 0.6. So good, strong numbers there. But what I'll be very careful, what I was very careful of was that, right? 0.6% average hourly earnings. Average hourly earnings usually when it's a good news or when it's growing um, shows a stronger economy. But in this case, when it's 0.6% higher than expected, higher than previous, this gives a bit of a worry, right? A bit of a worry. Why so? It's because if price or if average hourly earnings continue climbing, that is going to push up inflation. Things are going to get more expensive. Inflation is going to keep climbing higher, which is not great news for the US. Okay, so that paired up with the current trend. Right, so we saw good employment numbers. Unemployment rate still at 3.7%, but average hourly earnings a bit of a concern as it climbed twice as much um, as expected. That's why we saw the dollar index push up. On release of the news, it went from 104.45, about 104.45, pushed all the way up to 105.57 before tracking lower again, right? Before tracking strongly lower again. So that news, right? It's not just the news, but the overall trend, right? If I zoomed out, you can see the dollar index has been trading in that big downward move, right? In a big downward move towards the downside. That's why we saw, despite a good some good news there, it pushed up, but then overall still traded lower again. At this point right now for today, what actually happened was that it hit, or it started the day at that 104.16 level. And it's been bouncing slightly towards the upside. For me, no trades yet, right? Because um, overall, looking for the dollar index to weaken with the trend. Right now, given that it's bouncing back up, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to see what happens. I'm looking for the dollar index to actually um, trade up, maybe hit that level and turn back down, right? It might not go all the way might come back up a little bit before turning back down again. So I'm looking for it to retrace towards the upside, but I'm looking for that reversal. I'm looking to see whether price would react <clears throat> to that 105.12 level or that round number of 105, right? It might climb up towards 105 and turn down. It might turn down earlier, but I'm looking for that dollar weakness as an overall view. All righty. <clears throat> So that actually covers across um, all the analysis. You know, I'm looking for that dollar weakness to apply. As I expect dollar weakness to apply, like what Dell is asking for, that let's look at gold because we know that gold does have a bit of a, um, it's not a perfectly inverse relationship with the dollar. I have a lot of scribbles there. It's not a perfectly um, inverse relationship with the dollar, but there is some um, imperfect inverse relationship. Right? So gold actually came up, hit that one oh, 1808 level, right? As high as 1809. Right? It went to 1809 and then started retracing. Right? It started retracing, like what we're seeing there on the dollar. 
um, as it retraces back up. So at that point now, what we're looking for is within this range between um, what's this level? 1795 and 1809, right? I'm trying to see if price is going to maintain within this range, right? Or is it going to break? Right now, since it's not reacting to either levels, right? I'm not doing anything yet. I'm looking to see what happens at this 1795 level. If it does break, then the next key level there, you can see 1785. Did that on Friday, tested that on Tuesday last week as well. So quite a key level there. Okay, so overall, remember, I'm still looking at that dollar weakness. I'm still looking to see where can I, if I was trading gold, I'll be looking to see where can I buy it towards upside. So I'll be looking for either it to, from this level, bounce towards upside or trade lower before bouncing back up again. Okay, before bouncing back up again. Does that make sense to you, Dell? Thanks for the question. <clears throat> if it gets to that 1809 level, if it gets to 1809 level, and if it does break the 1809, how much higher can it go? Jump to the daily time frame. You can see right now, if I just drag that right across, right, 1809 is about there. Very good. <clears throat> Why it actually reversed from that point on H4 time frame is because we saw good reaction levels, right, consolidation reaction levels here several times. So it's been a good key resistance level there on gold. If it does break above 1809, then the next key level, I would say, would be at about 1870. It's a big range. This is on the daily time frame. It's a big key level towards upside. Before 1870, I would say that we might have another level here at 1838. Okay, why 1838? Again, identifying those levels of reaction there. Okay, not so much the last one, actually. So the first two as key levels of reaction. <clears throat> so I'm looking for a price. If it does break above 1809, could climb towards 1838. We have good momentum, 1870. But I think we might just see it get to 1838 and then um, pe peter out a little bit. All right. With a stop loss of 30 to 60 pips, I often get stopped out of my trades prematurely when the markets capitulate. Any strategies I can adopt to counter that? Sure thing. All right. So a um, couple of things to think about, right? With a stop loss of 30 to 60 pips, um, let me bring up the, for example, the Aussie dollar. All right. I'll show it to you. Um, can I ask, so wait, what time frame do you trade on? H1, H4? And 15, what time frames do you trade on? H1. Okay, great. So I've got this on the H1 time frame here. All right, and 15 of H1. All right. So I got this on the H1 time frame here just to um as an example, right? So I don't know which trades you've got into exactly, but as an example, um dollar, Aussie dollar on the H1 time frame, we've got resistance level there. Right at 0 0.6848, we can say it's 0 0.6850. We have a key support level there at about 0 0.6766. All right, so we've got our key levels in between those two points. If you were looking at a trade, right, again, um, not sure what exact trades you get into, but if you're looking at your trades, then some things to consider is that you might have been entering a little bit late, right? Why so? It's because if you did a short, let's say um, at this point, right? You've seen it, hit a level and turn down, you enter a sell position there, your stop loss will be about that 45. So in between your 30 to 60 pips, and then your take profit would be about your 
30 something, or let's say that it comes all the way down towards a one is to one risk reward ratio. Okay, so what happens is that you're right in the middle. I'll move this down just so that it makes sense for us. Right, so you're right in that middle area there. You know, you look at your risk to reward um, being one is to one. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, it would continue down all the way. Here, take profit, fantastic. Um, if not, then it comes, bounces back up to hit your stop loss of 30 to 60 pips. Okay. Um, so what I would say is that approach, what strategy, any strategy that adopt to counter that, I would say that approach it with the trend in mind, right? It's almost like you'd say like, what? I knew that. Okay. Approach it with a trend in mind. Why I say that is I wouldn't be looking to sell at these points. I wouldn't be looking to sell at these points. In fact, what I'll be looking at is not to sell. I'll actually be looking, sitting out, waiting. If price comes down towards that 6747 level, then I'll be looking to buy. All right. Then I'll be looking to buy. So at that point, back up. That way, you keep your stop loss tight. All right. I would normally say about 20 to 30 pip stop loss. Resistance level, uh, take profit towards the next resistance level. Um, you have your very good risk to reward ratios towards upside because you will be following that trend, that trend towards upside. Okay, we can also see a good resist support level there. So it could come down to this level and bounce, come down and bounce, or it could come lower, hit that level, and bounce back up. Straightforward. I think the easiest idea that I would say is to follow the trend. You know, um, typically if you are looking to enter trades, right, two to three trades a day should be your maximum. You shouldn't be looking to enter um, too many trades. If you're thinking about two to three good trades a day, um, and if you think of that as a bit of a benchmark then you'll be a lot more selective with your trades. You'll be waiting a lot more, you know, waiting for good trades to happen rather than trying to catch, right? At that point, trying to catch it down um, and then trying to buy it back up again. So when you wait for that to hit and bounce, right? In this case, maybe even something like that. To bounce back up, you can keep a stop loss quite tight. And then you can have your your quick trade up, right? So the main thing is um, stop loss, really you know, risk to reward ratios plays a very big part. You know, you could have a 30 to 60 pip stop loss, but if your risk to reward is very healthy, then um, it's not such a big issue as well. You might want to size down if you have a 60 pip stop loss, but you know your overall trading strategy is going to play out uh, rather profitably. What's the turnaround for these two to three trades? Typically, I'd say that like Tusha, Tusha was asking, you know, M15 or H1. If you are looking at the M15, H1 time frame, I would say within the day, All right? Within the day you're looking, and also depends on how you trade, right? So within the day, get in, go for a trade. You don't have to always wait for it to get to your take profit level as well. <laughs> it could come down, hit a level, bounce back up. You know, if you're sitting there watching, you could close out the trade or you could just leave it to run. It all depends on how I look at it, the news as well, right? I'm extra cautious about why I had to throw in the news, especially on the Aussie dollar there. I'm extra cautious about the Aussie dollar because you can see that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, 6th of December at 11.30, 30 a.m. GMT plus eight. We do have the Aussie interest rate decision was a 2.85% expected to go up to a 3.1%. All right. So let me ask you guys, if the Aussie um, interest rate does go up to a 3.1%, do you expect the Aussie dollar to go up or to go down? Do you expect the Aussie dollar to go up or to go down?
Well, I'm putting size down. What about everyone else? Up, up. All right. Okay, so typically, typically we do expect it to go up. Right, typically we do expect it to go up. I'll show you the example here on the 1st of November. All right, I'll just put on H4 time frame so it's easier to find. Uh, where first of November is right there. Okay, so it did it does go up. All right, so it does go up, but then it goes up a little bit before turning back down again. It goes up a little bit before turning back down again. If I can show you a few more examples, 4th of October and 6th of September. Again, on the 4th of October. We got it right there at 9 a.m. See, it went up a little bit before overall turning back down again. And then on the 6th of September and 2nd of August, last two I'm going to do. 6th of September. There we go. Okay. It, this one didn't even go up that much. Um, it just went straight down. And then on the 2nd of August, we have it right there. Um, where is it? it just went straight down on the release of the news. Okay. So just be extra careful that it looks like as much as typically we know that interest rate increase, we should see the currency strengthen. Since August, we've seen it trade lower straight away after the release of the news. In September, went up briefly before turning back down again. And then in October, again, briefly up before turning down. <clears throat> November, went up a bit more before turning down. And then we're here to December now tomorrow looking out for that news. What could be the reason for Aussie to go up for the time being and go back down? Is it because of the US bull run since the last year? Not quite, not quite, okay? Why so is because the Aussie interest rates are usually very uh, well, what's the word? Well forecasted, right? Well forecasted, well communicated. So a lot of times it's priced in. It's already been priced in um, with that decision. Right? And very seldom we get a surprise from the RBA. We had it in October. Right? We had a bit of a surprise in October, but they also saw that downside move. And as <clears throat> the Aussie continues or the RBA continues to increase interest rates, what that's likely to do is to slow down, <clears throat> <clears throat> is to slow down economic activity. Right, slow down economic activity in Australia, which could lead to a recession, which could lead to a recession. So with that, that's why we know we see that. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we see that reaction first. Interest rate increase. You know, some people will take that reaction move towards upside, a small move towards upside, <coughs> and then after that, um where the concerns about inflation, when the uh, recession as well, and then the um, factor of it being priced in comes into play, then we see the Aussie dollar drop back down again. Okay. <clears throat> Hope I answered your question there, Tusha. Right? Great stuff. So with that as well, as we talk about the Aussie interest rates tomorrow, Tomorrow at 11.30, GMT plus 8. What you also want to pay attention to is that on Thursday, not Thursday. Um, wait, I thought I saw it. Ah, there it is. On Wednesday, on Wednesday night, 11 p.m. GMT plus 8, we also do have the Bank of Canada. Bank of Canada with their overnight rates, which is the interest rates, looking to go from a 3.75 <clears throat> to a four percent possibly same impact we're going to see the canadian dollar weaken we're going to see that now weaken against the u.s dollar okay so if we look at the u.s cad at this point right right now u.s cad trading just at that take that away 
trading right at that 1.34 support level, right? Support level of 1.34. If we do see on to Wednesday night, we're still on Monday now, but if we do see on Wednesday night, um, CAD increased interest rates or Bank of Canada increased interest rates, the weakness in possible weakness in the CAD could push prices up from that 1.34 towards the 1.35 because we do have a bit of a resistance level there or even as high as that 1.36 level. All right. Uh, what I will show you here as well is the last time it happened um, in October on October 26 was 3.25 expected at 75 basis points, but they only did 50 basis points, 26 of October. Let's go back to that. 26 of October. And about that point there. Was it what time was it? I think it was at 11, 9, 11 or 10 o'clock. Right. So that's at the nine o'clock level. 26 of October. There. There we go. Oh, this is an H4. That's why I can't find it. Let's find it. Right, so you got there, 26th of October at that 10 o'clock time. You can see that weakness in the CAD pushing up, right? Trading off a support level, right? Trading off quite a good support level at that 1.3550 level or 1.3520 level and then pushing up quite strongly, right? So within that hour, we actually saw the CAD move up by a good almost 100 pips towards the upside before trading back down again. Why did it trade back down? Because of the overall trend. Okay, so fast forward to now, if we see it push back up, right? If it stays around that level, we could see it push back up 100 pips on release of the news before trading back down again. Okay. Um, so that's the news to pay attention to for Wednesday with the interest rate decision to come from the Bank of Canada. So a couple of, you know, two big interest rates decision to be released for this week. Just be extra careful if you're looking to jump into any trades, um, particularly the Aussie dollar tomorrow. Remember that as an interest rate decision. Um, on Wednesday, we do have a GDP number, right? Economic activity number for the Aussie. Look at that. Look like a slowdown from a 0 0.9. Expected to slow down 0.6%. Could be an impact because of the interest rate decision. Looking at that dollar, that possible Aussie weakness, right? So we expect this to maybe push up a little bit before turning back down. This could bring that down lower again. Bank of Canada with the interest rate decision. Again, that 25 basis points might see it shoot up and then after that turn back down. And then not a lot of news after that all the way through to Friday, early Friday, where we do have the consumer sentiment from the US expected to stay relatively unchanged from 56.8 to 56.9. Not a big change expected there. Okay. So you can see that, you know, just a couple of news to pay attention to. You don't have to watch every news item there. Um, you know, filter it down. I'll just pay attention to the two, three news items, the interest rate decision from the CAD, the GDP from the Aussie, and the interest rate decision from the Aussie. All right. Any other questions looking back at the charts? Um, looking at the euro dollar. Right, Euro dollar has a good strong resistance at that 1.0580 level. Turned down from that point. Um, it's gotten as well a good strong support at about that 1.05. I would say about that point. So within this range, it's a good support level. Right, even round number of 1.05 is a good 
support level. So I'll say that area there. So it looks like um, the euro dollar looks like it could be trading down towards this point, right? If we do see that dollar weakness continue, we could see this push back up. However, you know, as we're looking at the dollar index, if it does push up, retrace further, stronger towards the upside, then we could actually see the euro dollar uh, break down from this point and hit that 1.0440. 1.0447 level, right? Good, strong support level there. Okay, so nothing much on the euro dollar at this point. Everything is retracing. So I'm quite relaxed. I'm sitting out and waiting for it to finish its retrace before looking to jump into any trades, especially towards that dollar weakness. Now let's look at the NAS 100. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, um, oops, let me take that line away. So if you were retrace, is selling that retracement back up, fantastic, or buying that retracement back up, fantastic. Uh, why so is because of that previous move pushing up, right? I'll zoom out a bit so you can see, right? So it came down, hit that key support level there, right? So if I just did that, you can see, um, good strong support areas there at the 11,491 bounce strongly back up again good strong resistance there at 12,089 right highlight that for you guys so what happens now in between these two points Right, we saw it trade down. If I just did this Fibonacci up for you all, um, put it all in there. Okay, you can see that price actually shot down, hit that 61.8 level before shooting back up again, right? Shooting back up again. So what we're looking for at this point is whether it could, con well, it's consolidating at this level now. If it does turn down, can we see that downside? I think it's a little bit too early. We possibly need to see what is going to happen on the dollar index, right? What's going to happen on the dollar index? If the dollar index, <coughs> hang on, sorry. If the dollar index does, um, hang on one second. All right. If the dollar index does strengthen some more, if it does strengthen, then we could see this push back down a little bit before pushing back up again. All right. Actually, in fact, I do think that it's likely that it's going to consolidate at this area. Right. Consolidate this area, possibly come down, test this level before pushing back up again because the overall trend is towards the upside, good strong resistance there. <coughs> trading within that <coughs> trading within that consolidation. Um, so if we see that strength, you know, I'm looking for that to push down, test a good about a good round number of 11,900 before pushing back up again. Make sense for you, Tusha? Most welcome, most welcome. Anything else, anyone? Um, one of my favorite ones uh, was fantastic. Thanks for that, Sumit. <clears throat> I was super keen on the... <clears throat> I was super keen on the... Um, <clears throat> on the US Yen. All right, just this morning, I'll clear all these lines. Just this morning, I was super keen on the US Yen. Um as it was testing that level, <clears throat> right? It was sitting right at this level early this morning, 10 o'clock, no, nine o'clock, I was looking at this. I was thinking if this breaks this level, right? If it breaks this level as low as the previous was about 134.20, if it breaks below, closes below, what I mean by breaks is it closes below that level, 
then I was going to be looking for a quick trade down towards the 133.60 level. All right, so that would have been a trade that I'll be looking at. All right, stop loss about 30 pips, take profit. Again, about that 40 to 50 pip towards the downside. I was anticipating that this would be a quick trade similar to what happened there on Friday just to test and then rebound. Unfortunately, didn't happen. Set right at that support level before bouncing back up again. Okay. Um, things to pay attention to here on the US yen will be that 135.50 level. We saw it test and reject that level several times over the last couple of days. Uh, very recently, over the last hour, I do think it's going to come up, test again, and then possibly turn back down. <clears throat> you can see that my analysis here is all seemingly um, biased towards that dollar weakness. I'm still looking for it to turn back down. If it doesn't, then I wouldn't still be looking to buy. I would be looking for a reason why we're not look we're not seeing that dollar weakness, right? So I'll still be checking the news, right, to see what happened. Why are we looking at possible um, short medium term dollar strength, and then before possibly, if I do find a good strong reason, then I would change my bias. But overall, still looking at that potential dollar weakness to be applied. Alrighty. Makes sense, everyone. If you if it makes sense to you, put it into the chat. Let me know. If you found that this session has been interesting and good information, put it in the chat. Let me know. It helps me a lot. And if you do following from this session, following on from this session, right? This is a quick session here, it's only one hour. If you do have any questions, please jump onto the Tick Mill Traders Club, right? Get onto the Tick Mills Traders Club just so that, you know, when you're in the group here, you can always ask the question, update and ask the question, you know, is it getting to that level? Can we look to, you know, would this be a good setup to buy? Would this be a good setup to sell? We'd be happy to help you there as well. All right, so we can always take um, this session beyond the beyond the one hour here, we can take it onto the Traders Club and we can help you there. Don't trade alone, trade, let's all trade together. You're most welcome there, Sumit, Justice, Tushar, Marling, May, and Tia. Very interesting insights from that. You're most welcome. Alrighty. So with that, again, link is there. Make sure you jump on and ask the questions. Fire away. With that said, I hope you trade well, trade safe, and I'll catch you again. Oh wait, uh, we did we did go, Yawa. We did gold already. Um, last one. Just a quick recap. Gold. We were looking at it, trading lower, possibly testing the next support level or at the support level now could break down based on price action, could trade lower to the next support. Uh, but I'm still looking for it to bounce up if we see that dollar weakness continue. All right. So we'll all jump into the club and we can take it from there. All right. Well, that's it. Trade well, trade safe, and I'll see you again. Take care now. Bye-bye.